In this video, we're going to use the definite integral to derive the formula for the area of a circle of radius r. So we know the area of a circle is pi r squared. We just want to show how to derive it using the definite integral. So we have this situation here. It doesn't matter where the center of the circle is. Formula is always the same. So we're just going to focus on a circle of radius r. So we can look at this section right here. The circle centered at the origin, radius r. So this is r over here. If we find the area of this section here in the first quadrant, that's one fourth of the area because of the symmetry. So all we have to do is multiply by four. We're taking the strip here and the length of this strip will be this distance from the x-axis to the point of the circle. That's just gonna be y. Or in terms of x, it'll be this. So we can say that the area of the circle will be the area of this strip or this section multiplied by four. So this could be written as the integral from this point here, the origin zero to r, would be zero to r. And the rectangular strip would be y in terms of x, this would be the square root of x squared minus x squared dx. So this would be the area of this region right here in the first quadrant. We want the area of the entire circle, so we just multiply this by, by 4. And that's what you'd have to do to solve this particular problem. What method are we going to use? Well, this looks like your trig substitution here. So here are some of the forms that you have for integrals involving the square root of a squared minus u squared. Here a is a constant and u is the variable. In some cases it'll be x. But if, it, if you have it in this form, then you make this substitution, let u equal to a sine of theta. Then using some Pythagorean identities, this comes out to making this, substituting u equal a sine theta into here. And in other words, replace the u by a sine theta compute, it simplifies to the square root of a squared cosine squared. And we're dealing with positive value here, so taking the square root, we get a cosine theta. That's going to be your substitution. Now we're also going to use this formula from trigonometry. If you have cosine squared of an angle, that's always going to equal to 1 plus cosine twice the angle, whatever this is, multiplied by 2, divided by 2. We're going to use that particular formula. And just to make the problem a little bit shorter, I've set it up again for you here. So here's what we decided we're going to have. That's the area of the section we looked at. So the area of the entire circle would be 4 times this. This will be equal to. So I'm going to let x equal, but based on that uh, table, the x represents the u in this particular problem. So and the a in that formula is r. So the substitution is that x will equal to r sine theta. Then dx will equal to derivative of sine is cosine. So we have that. And then of course we have the d theta here. And then let's make the substitution into this radicand. We've got the square root of r squared minus, and then the x is replaced by r sine of theta. That's going to be squared. So you can see this is going to be factor out the r squared here under the radicand. We get 1 minus, and this is r squared sine squared, so this will be r squared, and that's factored out, and this will be sine, sine squared theta. And we know that cosine squared plus sine squared of an angle is equal to 1, so solving for or isolating the cosine squared, we get 1 minus sine squared of, of the angle is equal to cosine squared. So this is just cosine squared here of the angle. And then of course the square root of r squared will be r, and the square root of cosine squared theta is cosine. So we get this. So let's make the substitution. This is still going to be 4. The area will equal to 4 times this. So this is going to equal 2 
the integral. And to make it easier, I'm going to change the limits because we're going to transform this to an integral involving theta. So this part right here, this part right here is r cosine theta. This will be r cosine theta. And then the force constant, that'll be out here. And then the dx, i to put this back on there, dx is equal to r cosine theta, d theta. There'll be another cosine here, theta, d theta. And then this is going to equal to, so replace the dx by r cosine theta, d theta. So I have another r here, is r. And let's just multiply these out. r times r is r squared. And that's just the constant. So I can bring this outside the integral here. So I'm going to just put 4r here, squared. And then cosine times cosine is cosine squared, d theta. Notice the limits of an integration are from 0 to r, but that's involving x. We're now we transform this to an integral involving theta. So we have to make the appropriate changes here. So let's just do it this way then. Looking at this right here, remember here the, the, the limits go from 0 to r. So we have to look at this as, okay, what happens? What is, and this is over here in terms of theta. So let's look at it this way. When x is equal to 0, Looking at this limit. So we're changing the limits of integration. So now here, when x is equal to 0, you got 0 there. The r divides. So I, I, I still get sine of theta is equal to 0. If I, I replace the x by 0. But sine of theta is equal to 0 when theta equals to 0. I got that. And then what happens at r? When x is equal to r, x equal to r. So put an r right there r right there, and the r's will divide out to get sine theta is equal to 1. So sine of theta equal to 1 means that theta has to equal to 90 degrees or in terms of radians pi over 2. Now we can go over here then and say the new limits of integration then are going to be 0 to pi over 2. So again x equals 0, go to this formula here, we get theta has to be equal to 0 x equal to r, its sine of theta is equal to 1, so theta has to be pi over 2. That's how we get these limits from 0 to pi over 2. And I'm going to come back down here over here. So this is still going to be 4 r squared. Distill the integral here from 0, pi over 2. And now we're using that identity from trigonometry where I can replace the cosine squared of theta by 1 plus cosine of 2 theta over 2. And this is d theta. And then we just integrate this. So again, I got the 4r squared. That's a factor right here. So let's do it this way. 1 over, one over 2. That's 1 half. We're going to integrate with respect to theta. So that would be 1 half integrated with respect to theta. That'll give me, let me put it like this, 1 half of theta, or theta over 2. Now let's look at the cosine of 2 theta. This will be over 2. So the integral of cosine is sine. Integral of cosine is sine. So I put sine of 2 theta. Because it's 2 theta, the root of 2 theta with respect to theta is 2, and divide that by 2. So the 1 half out in front gets divided by 2, or, and this gives me a 1 half. Or I should say 1 fourth, because you got the one half in front. So this becomes a one fourth here. And then the, the limits of integration then are going to go from zero to pi over two. So this will be equal to, so I have the four r squared out in front. And then remember the way we, the way we integrate this is we go from zero to pi over two. So we evaluate this thing in the uh, brackets at pi over two. So the theta gets replaced by pi over 2, then you got a 2 under that, so this is going to be pi over 4. It becomes pi over 4. And then here on the 2 theta, put pi over 2 for theta, that gives me sine of pi, or 180 if you want. But that's going to be 0 times 1 fourth is still going to be 0. And then we have a minus. And then we integrate or evaluate at 0. So put a 0 where the theta is here, 
I'd be zero over to this part. This part goes to zero for this step. And then put a zero there, sine of zero, times one fourth. It's still going to be zero, so this will be this will be zero here. So what we have left in the brackets, we have pi over 4 left over. So multiply by 4, the 4 and the 4 cancels out, and we get pi r squared. So we have generated the area for a circle of radius r using the definite integral and, of course, some trigonometry, an identity, and, of course, the, uh, we use a trig substitution. So we confirm it again that the area of the circle is pi r squared. Doesn't matter where the radius is. In our case, we did it with the radius at the center just to make it more convenient. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.